Uh, this is optics lesson four. This is Young's double slits. So there's quite a lot of information in this lesson. A few calculation questions at the end. The next lesson, lesson five, will be delving more into the content via uh, examination practice. So the double slit interference with light. So it was first demonstrated by Thomas Young back in 1801. The fact that light showed interference effects supported the theory that light was a wave-like radiation. Now we have to bear in mind that back in 1801, obviously the photoelectric effect had not been discovered and there was a big discussion slash war between scientists on whether light was a particle or a wave. And this was strong, strong evidence for light acting as a wave. So this was the experiment that Thomas Young used. So we had a, a lamp with a colour filter, and the colour filter meant that the the waves that were used in the experiment were monochromatic, of single colour, and it's illuminated onto a narrow single slit S. And then diffracted out, which illuminates S1 and S2. Now, I touched on this in the previous lesson, as... We need S1 and S2 to be illuminated by light, which is coherent. So that means that it has the same frequency, which it does because it's the same light. And it also needs to be in phase. So we can't use separate lamps because, well, we could have separate lamps of the same frequency, but you wouldn't get interference because they, they wouldn't have the same phase relationship. They wouldn't be doing the same thing at the same time because light is given off from lamps in bursts. So it's totally randomized. So S1 and S2 need to be illuminated by the same light. So this technique ensures that the light from S1 and S2 is coherent and is in phase. And then we get some superposition of the waves. And we get some complete constructive interference, which is where we get the bright fringes, these ones. And we get some complete destructive interference where we get the dark fringes. When this is examined, normally there's a calculation. We'll look at the equations shortly. And also an explanation as to how the fringes appear. So you have to mention the coherency of the light. You know, it's monochromatic. Constant phase relationship. S1 and S2 being illuminated by light diffracted through the narrow slit. Then the idea of superposition. And the wave fronts adding together. And then complete constructive interference, giving the bright fringes. And the complete destructive interference, giving the dark fringes. Hopefully that's okay, let's move on. So just some experimental details. So light source needs to be monochromatic, so one colour or frequency. It can be achieved by using a colour filter with a white light. Alternatives include using monochromatic light sources such as sodium lamp or a laser. A single slit. Used to obtain a coherent light source. It's not needed if we use a laser. Double slits. So a typical width might be 0.1 millimeters. And a typical separation, 0.5 millimeters. The typical width isn't examined. Separation is part of the equation. Double slit fringe distance typically be about one meter. And the distance can be short if a microscope is used to observe the fringes. This probably won't be done at A level. However, we can use a microscope in a different experiment to do with diffraction gratings, which we'll look at in a couple of lessons. So this is just another view of what's happening. So we've got the source, the monochromatic source, single slit, diffraction, illuminates S1 and S2. Superposition, that idea is very important. And the superposition results in minima and maxima. The maxima is where we get constructive interference and the minima is where we get the destructive interference from the superposition of the waves. And remember to superpose, a wave must be coherent which means it has the same frequency and a constant phase relationship.
So interference fringes. Interference fringes are formed where the two diffracted light beams from the double slit overlap. So a bright fringe is formed where the light from one slit reinforces the light from another slit. At bright fringe, the light from both slits will be in phase. So a path difference is equal to a whole number of wavelengths. Dark fringes form due to cancellation, where the light from the slits is 180 degrees out of phase. And they'll have path difference of a half integer number of wavelengths. So Young slit equation. So the fringe spacing, which is the distance between the or the space of the fringe itself, denoted here as W, is equal to lambda d over s. So let's write down what these are. So s is the slit separation. d is the distance from the slits to the screen. And lambda is the wavelength of the light. So let's utilize this equation now. So let's pause and have a go at this. Calculate the fringe spacing obtained from a double slit experiment if the double slits are separated by 0.5 millimeters and the distance from the slits to the screen is 1.5 meters. So first of all, we're going to use a red light of wavelength 650 nanometers. So let's use the equation. So the fringe spacing W is equal to lambda D over S. So the wavelength is 650 nanometers times 10 to the minus nine. Multiplied by the distance to the screen, 1.5 meters, divided by S, separation of the fringes, zero point for separation of slits, 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And that gives us 1.95 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, or 1.95 millimeters. Now let's do the blue line. So blue light, once again, W is equal to lambda D over S. So wavelength, 450 nanometers, so 450 times 10 to the minus 9. Multiplied by the distance D, the 1.5 meters. And then divide by S, which is 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3. Put that in our calculators, we get a fringe spacing of 1.35 times 10 to the minus 3 meters or 1.35 millimeters. Let's do one more practice question. Hopefully that went okay. So if you want to pause and have a go at this one, calculate the wavelength of the green light that produces 10 fringes over a distance of one centimeter if the double slits are separated by 0 0.4 millimeters and the distance from the slits to the screen is 80 centimeters. So first of all, we need the fringe spacing, the W. So the fringe spacing will be the full centimeter. So 0 0.01 meters divided by the number of fringes. So we're looking at 10 fringes. So 0 0.01 divided by 10 gives us one times 10 to the minus three meters. For the fringe spacing. Then we have to do lambda equals WS over D. And then put our numbers in. So W is 1 times 10 to the minus 3. Multiplied by the slit separation. In this case is 0 0.4 millimeters. So 0 0.4 times 10 to the minus 3. Divided by the distance D to the screens. To the screen from the slit. So which is 80 centimeters. So 0 0.8 meters. So that gives us a wavelength that is equal to. 5 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, which is, of course, 500 nanometers. Remember, visible light is between 400 to 700 nanometers. So 500 nanometers is green light. With the, the spectrum, let's talk about this one for a moment. Hopefully that question went okay. So visible light is between 400 to 700 nanometers. Remember long wavelengths, so this will be the red side, and this will be the blue side. 
Red is long wavelength. Blue short wavelength. Red's low frequency. Blue's high frequency. And remember, they all travel at the same speed, the speed of light. Hopefully that lesson went okay. Uh, the next lesson, lesson five on optics, will be about white fringes and there'll be quite a lot of exam practice in that one. So hopefully this helped. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon.